Hi and welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Camera, proudly sponsored by Fujifilm South Africa. Joining me live in studio is Managing Director of TechSmart.co.za, Mike Hubert, and in Cape Town commercial photographer, Leon Westhazen. Welcome, gentlemen. Morning, Esli. Hi. Morning, morning. Morning, guys. So today's episode 14 and we'll be discussing the genre most practiced by all amateur photographers and enthusiasts in South Africa wanting to earn a little bit of extra cash at the end of a month. It's called portrait and family photography. In my eyes it's probably one of the most important genres as families would like images produced of their special moments shared with one another. But with this photographic industry where it is today, quality is no longer a selling point to seal the deal, but rather amount that you will pay for this sort of photography. I did a quick research on Facebook and I found that I would be able to get a family shoot for 350 bucks for 20 edited images. And if I wanted to do it in location, I can get 40 edited images for 500 bucks. The question, Leon, is will this be beneficial for both a family in quality and for the photographer in a monetary benefit? I tend to think not. <laughs> um, uh, the short answer, uh, I think not. Um, if, it, if it's a donation towards the photographer's petrol um, consumption, or, or maybe batteries for flashes, then yes, that's okay. But then it should still be classified as a free shoot. Um, the reason why I say that for our international listeners, um, the 350 bucks that Isley was speaking about is it's actually 350 rand, uh, which is less than a tenth of what the dollar exchanges at the moment. It's not a lot of cash. Um, so, so for for that amount of money, I don't think you can you can sustain a profitable uh, photography business. But you've got to start somewhere. And I think um, the most important thing is uh, that when you do start charging, that you start charging appropriately. And just because you um, you get money instead of paying money um, to make photographs doesn't mean that they're for free. Um, people have this idea that when you shoot a digital camera, you don't pay for your pictures, but you actually prepay for them. Um, it's you don't, you don't pay per roll of film as you would in the, in the days before. Uh, so now you now you pay for uh, cameras that get updated every two or three years, and they end up being it's a more expensive exercise if you don't charge accordingly. Um, so you've got to take all of those costs into consideration. Um, so I think in in that price bracket, you you really don't just um, shoot families; you also shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's interesting that you mentioned cost, Leslie, because. In the early days of photography, when the gorotypes just started, having your photo taken was a, a very expensive affair. But as um, the technology improved and photographers became a bit more frequent, the cost dropped. So you had a lot more people going to um, professional photographers. But then the Kodak Browning came along in, I think, 1900, and everything changed after that. The studio suffered from there. But, of course, it, the same happened with digital cameras. You know, everybody is able to take a selfie these days. But there's still a need to go to a professional photographer, get the family in, and uh, have professional photos taken. So it does allow people to make a living off this, like our guest today, Yvonne Soden, um, talking about uh, family portraiture. So I think it's, it's definitely able to, you're able to make a living and sustain yourself. But, you know, that price point is a, is a very delicate one, isn't it? It definitely is, Mike. Um, in, I think the way that you price yourself is also the way that other people see how, how much you value your own contribution in the photographic genre. So if, if, if I had to come up to you and say, listen, I'm willing to do your family photographs for 50 rand, um, that that is that is next to nothing. It's basically the the price of a hamburger. Um, <laughs> so that's that it 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 has more of a, a feeling of desperation and um, it, wanting to do wanting to do something at a deliberately lower cost just to be able to call it work. Um, but I think my recommendation for somebody that's pricing in that 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 bracket is is to rather shoot more uh, shoots at a higher price but also do some that are deliberately free where you can where you can experiment and try some new new techniques and stuff where uh, where you tell your clients listen I'm going to do this shoot for free because uh, of whatever reason that you want to give them but the point is that you that you don't have any um, crazy obligations to produce a certain kind of image this is a test shoot um, and do those for free but when you charge then you charge based on the experience that you've built up in the free stuff and you don't undermine the industry. Um, you, you actually buy into it by charging uh, properly. 
Mike, international photographers that stand out in this genre? I think when it comes to baby photos, it's hard to ignore Australia, Australian photographer Anne Geddes. Uh, regardless of what you think of her style, she coined it with those uh, cute baby dressed as fruits and flowers and vegetables. Technically, she knows her way around a medium format camera and many photographers have tried to get that same look and feel but of course failed miserably. She's a photographer that uh, puts as much effort into her marketing as her images, and there's certainly a lesson to be learned there. Personally, I like what American photographer Jamie Diamond did with his constructed family portrait series. You look at his family photos that he captured with mom and dad holding hands and everybody smiling, and it looks just like uh, yet another family posing for a portrait. But the thing is, the people in the pictures are not family at all. He got them off the internet and made them come together for the photo. So what Diamond is doing is playing around with the regular narrative of a happy family and what the family portrait represents. Of course, he's also confronting the trope of the photographer as witness. Here, it's the photographer that's lying and the photos that are the lie. Um, The photographer is not the witness, but rather the perpetrator. Follow us on SOC underscore live on Facebook as well as Instagram, where we will share links to the photographers mentioned by Mike. Our guest today, Yvonne Soden, has always enjoyed photography, even before she had a proper camera, documenting her daily life when she worked in the Netherlands and her travels around Europe. Her husband bought her her first DSLR back in 2009, and she hasn't stopped shooting since, starting her own business in 2012, capturing family portraits. Of her photography, Yvonne says, I used to work with children for some time, so it was a natural step to kids and family photography. It's amazing to capture the bond between all the different members, for them to treasure a specific time in their journey together. Sometimes you need to hold on to a memory for longer than just a moment. Here to talk about family portraiture, Yvonne Soden, welcome to the Straight Out of Camera podcast. Thank you. Am I right in saying that if you want to take on family portraiture as a job, you have to have uh, some serious people skills? Uh, I think so. Um, If you really want to capture a family as they are and not just have a set portrait where everyone looks seriously into the camera to get them to interact with each other and to just get them comfortable in front of you as well, I think it's really important to to make sure you have a good rapport with them before you even go into the photography mode. Now, just for our listeners, you don't take the regular studio portraits. You take them out into parks and in and kind of like a natural light environment yes um i i, I, I personally it's a uh, studio photography is not my style i like going out with them and let the kids run around and play with the, the parents and i find once you get through to the kids and the kids start relaxing and they start interacting with the parents and the parents relax and it just becomes a very natural environment so how do you get kids to relax though <laughs> well that's uh it's it's for me i like to to like jo- just joke with them and run around with them and just let them run just let them not sit still and smile for the camera just let them be themselves mm-hmm. yeah um yvonne when you when you uh compose your images um you say you let them be themselves and do all sorts of stuff do you also um compose them for for shots where they're actually conscious of the camera so, so it's not just all um free flown a bit more of a documentary approach to the family um, do, do you group them together and if you do what uh, what approach do you do you have to communicate what you want to achieve out of the picture because obviously they can't see themselves yeah for sure um, you know as a photographer you need to look at the light and what works as what works for a photo so I try not to pose them at all um, you know in the um, original sense of posing just like strict sitting exactly where you want them to but I look at the lights I set them in a spot that I think will work for a photograph and then I just let them you know interact with each other and not necessarily look and pose at the camera if I want them to quickly look at me I ask them to look and otherwise I just let them interact with each other I just set them in the place where I want them to if you know if there's a hand out of place that doesn't work I ask them to move the hand but for the rest I just let them be themselves. So in 2009, your husband and fellow photographer purchased your first DSLR for you. Where did the passion for photography start? Sure. Um, as a kid growing up, my, my dad was also very uh, active with photography. He always, always had a, a camera in hand. And um, just see, looking back and seeing all the family photos, how important that is to capture family. And I just really love 
the interaction within families and I'm really close with my family and I know how important it is to to make sure you you remember these moments because they never last and looking back on moments that maybe not big moments but it's usually the little moments that uh, that capture family life and it's just amazing for me to see that and to capture that for other families as well. Yeah, I think it's all good and well to have a number of photos on your cell phone, but to have actually ones printed out and stick uh, stuck into a family album, that is really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So we chatted a little bit about cost earlier, how to charge and what you're asking. What about marketing? How important is it to market your product? And then also um, a second question perhaps is, how important is word of mouth? Um, word of mouth is um, for me is actually my main um, my, my main source of marketing. Um, as a as an artist, you know, admin is never your strong point. So um, word of mouth is definitely the the way, way I get most of my clients. Um, social media is a big part of that. Um, I think people go more to social media and your social media sites than they actually go to your website. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like I said, word of mouth is definitely, um, you know, people hear from, people like to, to get recommendations by people they know and they, they who will know what they are looking for and what, what you can offer. Um, Yvonne, um, when, you, um, when you put together a package for somebody, um, what, do you, what do you find are the things that, that people prefer to have? Uh, because back in the day, we would have prints. Um, and now things are very digital. Do you do you offer prints um, as as part of your packages, or is it something that you insist on, or or, or how digital is the experience for your clients at the moment? Uh, all clients definitely want digital images. They um, the minute they they have the photos, obviously want to share it online, which is obviously great for my marketing as well. But um, I do like to insist on some prints because I don't think people, especially these days, realize the the value of prints mm. until they actually have them. And um, people, are, they have so many photos on their phone, phone, like Mike said, and they don't realize how important it is to have that photo up on the wall and see it every day and yeah. have, your, have your family and your kids and your friends see it. And it's just, it's just so, so important. It's a funny thing because um, I started uh, printing photo books and just that thing of having the book there, being able to page through it instead of going to browse through X amount of digital photos makes a big difference. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, to also to just, I mean, you're not going to, if, you, if you're taking photos with your phone, you're not going to put all that in a book. But if you narrow that down and more, be more selective of what you want to print and just make sure you have those, that's really important. In all honesty, we live in a beautiful country, but it is very difficult um, for us to keep those memories safe. So I think that being able to print those images rather than have someone break in, steal your iPhone or your, your hard drive, um, you in a situation where you actually can keep those memories and those precious moments. I can't uh, recommend enough to have a the Google app, Google Photos app on your phone. Yeah, just have everything uploaded to Google. Um, it's searchable. It uh, tracks the faces. It tracks your where it was taken. It's an amazing service. Um, I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, Yvonne, uh, uh, w- when we talk about making images that that are a kind of a quick turnaround. Uh, I understand that you have switched over to to the Fuji system, and uh, how has that been beneficial for you in the way that you communicate with your clients and and your your workflow in terms of your color management and uh, how quickly you get from from one part of in your workflow to the next stage? Um, well, like with any new gear, it took some getting used to. Um, once I used from DSLR to mirrorless, um, but so far, I mean, just purely. On a, if you look at a weight basis, it just makes life so much easier. It's so much smaller. It's, I think it's especially for kids so much less intimidating. Instead of this massive camera mm-hmm. in their faces, you can, you can you know, have a much more direct uh, line of sight with your, with your clients. Um, and then with the, with the camera, to work with the cameras themselves, I mean, with the mirrorless, you immediately see in, in the viewfinder what you're going to get and that makes it so much faster to just get the shot especially with you know running after kids and making sure they still just want to do their own thing just make sure you know, you know you have the shot and you can move on to the next one and with um, with working the the post editing um, I find especially with uh, with the Fuji systems the the film simulations are just so amazing and the color tones you get out of there I mean classic chrome is for me a very very big favorite and it's just absolutely beautiful have you ever had difficult clients? 
Um, I think I've been very lucky so far. Um, you know, especially with families, people are relaxed. It's not. I think it's not. A, it's not a work environment. So people, it makes it makes it really easy. People are with their family. They're relaxed. I, I actually have been very lucky so far. I haven't had any difficult clients. A turnaround time. What do you usually do? Uh, for family shoots, I try within a week to have it edited, and if I do prints, maybe a week and a half. Um, but then within a week and a half, the, the client have all the photos on, on on disc, and then also the prints. Yvonne, um, when um, when I take a look at, at portrait photography in general and families more specifically, there's there's quite a lot of examples that come on just in a regular Google search. Um, in what way have you set about to to differentiate yourself. I mean, take a guy like um, Jake Olson, for instance. He he does very shallow depth of field kind of stuff and vast open expanses, and it looks like it's heavily treated and edited. Um, how would you describe your style, and how did you arrive there? Um, my style of photography, I like to keep things very simple. So, um, kind of what the I try to to have the the family exactly how they are, and then there's very little. I don't do heavy, very heavy editing. I do some color corrections or, you know, um, the the tones and some contrast. And I just try to, to make it look as natural, poss- natural as possible, but just try to uh, capture the moment as it was. Um, I also love my depth of field. Um, and like I said, since we're out in the, the open, it's always natural light and it's all it all seems very natural. And it's nice, you know, bright colors. If it's outside in, in the park, it's nice and green and the kids are usually wearing nice bright colors. So is there like three tips that you could give our listeners on shooting sort of natural light images in a park scenario with a family? Um, well, three tips. Um, I'd say, um, well, the time of day is always very important. We all know that nice golden hour. I, I always shoot my shoot my customers at that time of day. We, we make sure it's about an hour, hour and a half before sunset. Then always make sure you know where the light's coming from. And uh, make sure there's enough space for the kids to run. Just make sure they, they have space to just be themselves. Do you sometimes use artificial light? Um, very, very little. Um, I sometimes l- use reflectors to, uh, to to more direct the light to where I want to be. Artificial light um, out in the open, no, I don't really do that. Do you scout your locations beforehand? Yes, every single time. Yeah, I usually go at least within the the week before. I just make sure because even if you go to the same park as a previous shoot, it you know it's always different. You know, at different times of year. So I always go and make sure where to go so that when the clients there, I don't have to start looking around what works. I know where I want to be and what will work for what I want. Um, Yvonne, when uh, when you post to social media, obviously it's fine to to make an album um, of of a portrait of somebody that you've shot. But the moment you, you post families and things, they're obviously their kids involved in that kind of stuff. Um, how do you deal with that? Or, or is it something that your clients just, they, they prefer sharing online? Um, or, or do you have things in place like that? I'm always quite hesitant about um, family photographs and just posting things specifically when it's kids. Um, have, you, have you got any policies around that? Or what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, that can become very tricky, especially with kids. Um, s- social media can be very, um, very dodgy sometimes. With you know, your stuff isn't really private, even though you think it is. Um, I make sure in my contract it does say I am allowed to share the photos, but I never ever do it without checking with the family first. And I actually prefer them to post it and just tag me in it. I'll just mm-hmm. share their al- album. I'd rather let them choose the photos they want to share, and I'll share that through them rather. What That's be- really cool. Sorry, Leon. Um, what would be the reason why people come and take family portraits? Have you kind of figured out, you know, the underlying bottom of it, if you can say that? I think a lot of people realize the the photos on their phones will not last. It's it doesn't have the same quite kind of long, longevity that um, printed photos have. They they realize it's photos. You take a million photos and you don't actually do anything with them. And I think the minute they pay for the photos, they realize it's 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 worth a lot more. They have to actually you know share it and. It's it's just better portraits to to last a longer life. Mm-hmm. Accessories that we need to have with us at all times. Like I said, I keep it very simple. I like my prime lenses. Um, when I go shooting, I I, I find to uh, to have too many lenses, too many choices really makes it, uh, takes takes away from the family. And don't don't uh, concentrate on the gear. Make sure you know your gear. Have what you want. I have usually my fifty six, one point four on there, and I shoot. With that, if I want wider, I 
swap lenses once and I do not try to fuss too much with gear otherwise. Uh, also, um, Yvonne, when you when you're talking about gear, obviously uh, getting getting those right moments that's pretty uh, pretty important to to be able to get the exact moment when people are looking at each other and all that kind of stuff. Do you find um, that that the the gear is responsive enough? And um, when you when you use memory cards and things, that does does something as simple as that play a role in how you how you operate? Do you shoot large bunches of photographs and select later on, or do you really work very decisively in the moment? Uh, very much in the moment, um, uh, with the regards to the the memory memory cards, I make sure they they're nice and fast, so that the minute you take one shot, another one happens, you can immediately get that as well. Um, especially with larger groups, I make sure I, I shoot a couple because there's always someone looking away or looking funny or blinking, and if you have a couple to choose from, that's always good. Um, but usually, you know, you you can see quickly if you if you got the shots or not, and if you can move on. Great, great. So you've got the pregnancy sh shots, you've got the family photos in the park, you've got the kids. Um, I've heard that there's a little bit of money to be made in matric photography too. Yes, I've done a couple of matric shoots as well. Um, but since it's all, it usually a very set up as well. But um, the couple of um, matric shots I've done is usually I take them to a park as well. And just it's usually just one or two couples and they pay for an hour. And you um, just take some nice shots, some nice portraits of, you know, especially the girl in the dress and the guy in the suit and a couple of them together. It's very nice. If you had to set yourself a challenge in terms of family portraiture, um, where would where would you challenge yourself? What is what's the next thing? Um, I, I think um, to maybe shoot some studio shots would be very interesting for me um, because it's such a more structured um, process and to have more structure to the suit structure to the shoot will probably be a bit of a challenge for me rather than just let it flow uh, yeah I think I think that's actually a good way to do it because a studio has a different a uh, different kind of a feel about it and it doesn't have to be necessarily with um, with with flash photography um, you, you get studios that are specifically geared towards using daylight so you don't have to go and scout a location or wait for the perfect weather it's just nice light all the time um, yeah, I think that that would be great because people respond differently to to a, a more official kind of a space, and then you can have more more deliberate kind of things that you do inside that. I think that's a great that's a great way to go. Um, in in my my opinion, I find um, when I'm shooting families that the hardest thing for me is to direct everybody so that um, <laughs> so that everybody knows what they what they're doing because I need to kind of see them and and make sure that they're all looking normal. <laughs> um, uh, when I say normal, when, so they don't have sort of like eyes half closed and that kind of stuff. Um, th that's it, it's always my my question for people for, of all the kinds of photography group shots. I think is my greatest challenge, and that's something that you choose as your style. Um, so I think my question in that is, how do you ensure um, what kind of what does that conversation look like when you when you direct people? Um, whether that's maybe in, in a studio or outdoors, how do you confine it so that they don't go off off the charts and never look at you? Well, like I said, I like them to interact with each other, but I, when I when I put them in a certain spot where I want to shoot them, I, I like to say maybe to the husband, you know, say something to the wife that no one else knows about it. Or when you're shooting mm -hmm. kids, you you sing a song like completely wrong, and that always brings out massive laughter because they think you're you're being silly. Mm -hmm. And that always helps, and you know that also gets a more natural reaction than telling them to smile. Because then, then the minute you tell them to smile, you get what I like to call the chicken run smile, mm. um, and that's not nice on any photo. So if, the, if you just interact with them and get them to to have a natural reaction to something you say or something the spouse says or something the kids do, that that's always a great thing. Why a chicken run smile? Have you never seen the movie <laughs> Chicken Run? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like yeah. Then you'll if you see the, the movie. Teeth. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's a big fake smile. Yvonne, where can we get you on social media or on a website? Uh, my website is uh, www.itche.co.za. Um, I think you need to maybe yeah, spell, spell yes, that. Yes, <laughs> is Y-T-J-E. Um, I don't have a social uh, Facebook page at the moment, but my, on my Instagram you can get me uh, at Yvonne Soden. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us today and chatting about um, family and portrait 
images. I think the biggest challenge in that is what we said at the end is actually getting them not to have those fake poses, but actually have a more natural sort of um, look about it. Um, gentlemen, where can we find you on social media? Yes, Lee, I'm at Leon Westhuizen on Instagram and leonslens.com everywhere else. Uh, you can visit our technology page at techsmart.co.za and my personal Instagram is fark1. Leon, you have something happening on the 15th of this month? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, coming up on the 15th, we have another slow shutter speed walk. We're shooting only at a 15th of a second for those that uh, aren't aware of it yet. There's a Facebook page dedicated to it. Um, it's called uh, 1 over 1 5 TH for those that want to join and go check it out. And if you're in Cape Town um, this coming weekend, please come and join us. It's totally for free. It'll be in the late afternoon, early evening. Um, and we're doing it in uh, in the city center in Cape Town. So it, it promises to be really interesting to kind of see what kind of slow shutter action we can get. And hopefully, hopefully you'll be shooting in the rain. Hopefully, yes. Yeah, I mean, that makes it even more interesting. Also in Johannesburg, we've got the Fuji Lounge. It will be hosted at Photo ZA in Rosebank, Johannesburg. Um, it will be... Well, it will start at 8 o'clock in the morning and we will have a couple of discussions um, some of them will be Q and A's on product. Um, there will be a discussion on portrait um, photography, black and white image prints, long exposures, family and holiday images. There will be a portfolio critique, a peer review, and a whole host of other events. So come and join us at the Photo ZA on the 15 for the Fuji Lounge event. I'm actually doing the, doing the family and holiday photos. Awesome. Oh, cool. yes. We look forward to having you there. Awesome. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Yvonne, it was a pleasure. Thank you Have for a having great me. day. Cheers, guys. Bye. Brandlive.co.za. Co.za. 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 Co.